far away is Jay? He is at the blue truck. Oh, right there. He's got a blue jacket. Yeah, like matches your hat. Okay, so the intro right now? Yeah. That right there is 12 year old Nolan, a fan of Uncutain. We are in his house and he does not know we are in his house. Nolan, welcome to Uncut Angling. Come on in here. Oh. We are taking Nolan fishing for the entire weekend for stock trout. Nolan knows nothing about this. What's up? Nothing. Um, <laughs> I don't know what to say. <laughs> oh. Pumps? Yeah. Wind way down. Did it really? Yeah. Whoa. What's I going on? I saw a flash go by. Where? Uh, it might be just my eyes, but I did see a flash of some sort. Just like right here. I was looking at Jay and then I looked down. Yeah, there's a fish, chill. Just jiggle your lure, pound on the spot. Oh, there's another one. Okay, set it, set it, you got him. <laughs> Could have had a double. Okay, don't let him be on the surface. Where's the net? It's a nice big one too. Yeah, just keep my rod like this. Yeah, keep pulling him towards that way. Yeah, you're doing great. I can see him fighting down there. He's hooked well. That was so cool. He just swam up okay, and just. Ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Just take your time. Just take your time. Lift up slowly. Yeah, lift up slowly. Oh, he's battling good. This is a beautiful male tiger trout. He's got a nice tall body on him, a nice kite. Here. Should I take him right there? Oh, yeah! yeah. Whoa! Whoa! Yeah, yeah baby! Woo! <laughs> Dude! <laughs> That was so scary, it was like two shadows just coming in. It's like, whoa. Okay, I'm just gonna leave that little spoon in the net. Are you ready, buddy? Yeah. Welcome to Uncut Angling. Such a beautiful fish, my first tiger trout ever. No one just pulled this tiger trout. Trophy tiger trout. We are shallow water sight fishing here. I'm gonna set that fish free right now. Woo! <laughs> yeah! We are sight fishing here for stock trout. We're set up super shallow, but you can do this on any stock trout water, and you can fish deeper as clarity allows. The most important thing is taking all the time to set this up, because now we're camped out here. Put a warm up. Y'all ready to go? Yeah. Okay, you just stick with me and check the depths and let okay. me know what it is. Yeah. As you can see, it's seven feet, and we are talking about being a little shallower. So check these other ones here, Nolan. See if it's coming up in these next ones. Okay, six, five, one point five. We've already drilled a bunch of holes here. We are going above and beyond to scope out the whole area, and we've decided to fish right off this beaver house. So we're drilling every four or five feet in a line. Nolan has checked each hole, so we have a full feel for the contour of the shoreline here, and we can set up exactly where we want and have confidence that we're sitting on a high percentage spot that the fish would likely use as an ambush point, right? Yep. Okay, so have you seen where it sort of drops a little bit? Is there an edge? Is it flat? What, what are you seeing? Um, Like from down there, it's really shallow and it kind of gets steeper. Okay, whereabouts did it start getting deeper? We want to maybe like be right on that first part. These where four or five holes. Okay, watch how clear this break line is. So you can see that the depth is right at the limit of the chisel here. It's right at the limit of the chisel again, right at the li limit of the chisel again, right at the limit of the chisel again. So it's, it's absolutely flat here. And now watch what happens when we get there. All of a sudden, we've come up, it's two feet shallower. So we're gonna set up right here, bridging that gap, and then we're right on the contour. Definitely a point of interest. And uh, let's put the shack right over top of where we're gonna put that hole. Okay, right let's do it. We've got a grid we're gonna mark out now, now that we have the shack in place. So I'm gonna go inside, cut holes for the outside, line of where we want that sight fishing hole that we're going to be building. Now I can see the exact area that that hole is going to be and how it's going to set up. We're going to move the shack off. Icesaw.com is where we got this awesome saw. The ice is a couple feet thick now. Otherwise what we do is we would just cut out that sight fishing hole right now with the pilot four corners. Since the ice is thicker we're going to make it easier on ourselves. We're going to let the Honda do the cutting here. I'm going to cut with the Strike Master holes a foot apart or so. As you can see, I've got a really sharp angle on my auger. You're probably thinking I was drilling some really crooked holes here. And I'm purposely flaring out those holes all the way around. And that way when our final hole is cut, we're gonna have a nice undercut all the way around and then we're gonna be able to visibly see so much more to the sides as fish are coming in. And it's gonna act like it's a much bigger hole than it is. Okay, Nolan. Yep. So same thing. 
as you're cutting, as opposed to just cutting a straight up and down line like this, turn the saw out more. Yep. See that angle? Keep the ang angle of the saw like this so that we're flaring out the bottom of the ice and we have way more visibility. Woo. There should be. So now what we have is this giant ice block. It's almost strong enough to lift a man. Not quite. Yeah. So come stand on the edge and all you have to do with that chisel is push down, okay? So don't lean on it because I want you to follow it in. As soon as we get that edge started, there we go. We can just push this part and there she goes. goes. You can see this is a lot of work. This takes a lot of preparation, but the result is being on a precise location. And we can even visibly see a weed edge that's below us right on that break line we found. We're using long rods here, even though we're fishing in a shack and the, the general line of thinking is you wanna use a short rod and a shack, but a longer rod is so much more enjoyable to fish. Nolan's is a medium action Hadia Frabo rod. It's designed for trout. Mine is heavy action. It's designed for lake trout, a way bigger rod. But the main consideration is if you're using a big bait, you're gonna want a big rod to control that bait. If you're using a lighter bait, you're gonna want a lighter rod. Just like in the summer, if you're using big baits and you're casting them, you want a much heavier rod to control that. So it's more to do with that than to do with the actual species that you're targeting. Fresh, fresh. Wait, every shell, every shell. You just, you keep jiggling. He's wanting mine. He's really wanting mine. I just don't want to snag him. Oh, he's going to eat mine. Oh, he tapped it once. Are you jiggling yours? Yeah. Just keep jiggling yours to get his attention. Ooh. Are you jiggling yours? Yeah. Go a little lower. Is he still there? Yeah, he's still there. Uh, let out a little bit of line, pull a little bit of drag out. Pull, drag out. How's the... Uh, back, he's coming. Give a couple flicks with yours, harder flicks. Now, now just jiggle on spot. Just keep jiggling on spot. This fish, oh, this is ridiculous. Give a hard flick with yours, hard flick with yours. Hard flick with yours, hard, and now jiggle, just jiggle, just jiggle. Go, yeah, yeah, let him run, let him run, let him run, get him off, off the surface, yeah. Nice and easy, nice and gentle, nice and gentle. Nice and gentle. Ooh. Oh yeah, baby. Yeah. <laughs> oh, look at the rod. Here he comes. Should I take him right now? Oh, yeah. oh wow, how cool was yeah. that? Woo. And you never would have any feel for that or that much excitement if you were using a, a flasher or just sitting here fishing on your pail. <laughs> Having this hole to witness what we just witnessed was as electric as it gets. Thank you, man. Oh, was that ever cool. I'm gonna lift him out right now. This Fraybill soft mesh net, so ideal, an open water net, just to take maximum care of this fish. Gorgeous tiger trout. This is a cross between a brook trout and a brown trout. This one's a female. You can see it's got very different colors. Not the aggressive kipe and bright orange belly, but still gorgeous golden fish in great shape. Yeah. <laughs> so cool. What Nolan just caught that one on is a brand new bait. It's called a PK Predator Spoon. It's got a little blade flicking off the side there. And what he was able to do, you saw on that one, is he ripped it once to get his attention, but then he was just jiggling it on the spot and that blade was flickering. And that's what finally coaxed that fish to smash it. I was using completely opposite end of the scale here. You can see how huge my Jackal TN60 Rattlebait is. And that is just a classic one-two punch. I'm doing the crash and bang to really call those fish in. This bait, this Jackal TN60 is probably bigger than most people would ever think to use for stock trout. They will eat it, but it's definitely more of a call-in bait. Get those two different options going and way to go, bud. Thanks. Thank you very much for watching. Do us both a favor and click this button up here to subscribe to Uncut Angling, get plugged into our future videos. Try this technique out, and if you do, at the end of the day, mark the hole out in case somebody's out for a rip in the middle of the night. 
The hole will be saved by the morning, but for the time being, pile up some snow, jam a stick in the ice, do something to mark it out. And the last thing you need to do is go get married, hire Uncut Anglings, Jay Siemens to be your cameraman, do your wedding photography, rock and roll, cheerio.